Hello everyone and welcome to Edusearch Clinics. We are back to our medical statistics series and now we are going into some very important discussions to complete our series on descriptive statistics. Let us take an example as always. A simple thing is that suppose you have gone to a grocery store and you want to find out the amount of calories in a random packet of cereal. Now, there are 150 plus similar products. There are so many brands and so many products. Of course, you can't see all 150 products to select one product. But if you want to select a random product, the shopkeeper tells you that there are roughly 100 calories per 100 gram of cereal. Give or take 30. Okay. So, if your shopkeeper tells you this, there has to be some basis of it, right? What is this roughly what is this give or take? So keep this question in mind. We will come to it again when we are discussing variance and standard deviation. Okay. Similarly, suppose you want to find a consistent player for the Indian cricket team or a reliable player like Mr. Reliable. Okay. So what is Mr. Reliable? Again, we are looking at variance and standard deviation. In medical terms, example, stroke volume variation, right? Variation, variation in blood pressure, variation or fluctuation in temperature. All these things are basically variation and standard deviation or dispersion or how are you behaving around the central tendency? Are you consistent? Variation in stock prices, right? Buy or sell criteria. All of this is based on the concepts of Variation, standard deviation, measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. Now a question may arise in your mind that we have already seen the five point summary. We have seen five different measures. Why do you need variation? Okay. So suppose you have these kind of data with three different series. You can see that if you are looking at the red series or the blue series, its beginning and end is more or less at the same level. So you will not identify the inherent variation in this series if you look only at the beginning and the end data. Similarly, if you look only at the measures of central tendency, which is the center circle, you see that all of them are interacting nearly at the same level. So again, red and blue, you will feel at this level that there is no difference. But in fact, there is a lot of difference. To identify this difference, okay, in between the parameters, in between the five-point summary variables is the need of variance and standard deviation. Now, variance and standard deviation applies to single sample, applies to multiple samples. When you have multiple samples, you can also look at a coefficient of variation. Don't worry, we will look at all these terms and we will calculate these values as well. Again, if you want to look what is beyond these black lines, okay, there may be one or two values which are beyond these black lines or the outliers that is given by the Z score. So these are four terms that you need to understand. Variance or the variation, standard deviation, which is basically square root of variance, coefficient of variation and Z score. Let us take an example of a normal distribution. This was the same example that we used in the five point summary. If you have not seen that video, do have a look. We have already seen that this is normal distribution. So how do we differentiate these terms? The concept is very simple. If you are looking at clustering around the meal, okay? If you are looking at clustering around the mean, you are looking at variance and standard deviation. How far the data is from the mean, how far a single value is from the mean is basically variance and standard deviation. If you are looking at extreme values, values given by these stars, that is where you are looking at Z score, okay? So if you are looking at outliers or extreme values, you are looking at a Z score, if you are looking at clustering around the mean, you are looking at variance and standard deviation. So coming back to our example now, when the shopkeeper told you that the cereal, if you select randomly, has roughly 100 calories per 100 gram, give or take 30 calories. That means 70 to 130, 100 minus 30, 100 plus 30, so 70 to 130. 
Now this give or take is basically clustering. So what the shopkeeper is telling you is that roughly most of the cereals have calories between 70 and 130, accounting for a random median or mean that the shopkeeper felt was 100 calories. Okay. Because this clustering value 30 has a unit, it is standard deviation. So remember that standard deviation is the same unit as the data. Variance, on the other hand, is square of standard deviation or standard deviation is square root of variance. And that is why a squared value has no unit. So whenever you have a unit in the clustering data, it is standard deviation. Variance is SD square. It has no unit. This is important to understand. The shopkeeper here is not accounting for a product which may have 20 calories or 200 calories, right? So there may be a product which has only 20 calories per 100 gram, but that will be an outlier because as per the shopkeeper, if you see all these 150 plus products, the clustering is in between 70 to 130. So most of the data is between 70 to 130. And the shopkeeper is not accounting for one or two outliers, which may give you 20 calories per 100 gram or 200 calories per 100 gram on both extremes. These extremes are basically identified by Z score. Okay. So I hope this gives you a very simple explanation of what is standard deviation, what is variance. They are basically looking at clustering and outliers basically seen by Z score. Let's look at some more examples. When we look at a consistent player, okay, basically a player who makes 40 to 80 runs in most IPL matches, for example. Now, when we say 40 to 80, we are looking at give or take, right? It may be 50, it may be 60, it may be 70. But if a player is making 40 to 80 runs in most IPL matches, that is a reliable player. Basically, this value is given by variance and standard deviation. Because we are looking at runs, we are giving it a unit, it is standard deviation. Now, a player who makes most hundreds, okay, hundreds and extreme values. So if we are looking at most hundreds only, you want a Z score, okay, you want an outlier. A player who's had maximum dismissals in zero to five scores. So you're looking at someone who's doing bad in the match, a 0 to 5 score, maximum dismissals, again an outlier, you are looking at a Z score. Similarly, it can be applied to stroke volume variation, variation in blood pressure or temperature fluctuation, variation in stock price, right? Someone will tell you a stock is fluctuating between 200 rupees and 350 rupees. They will say that if it falls to 150, you may have to sell the stock. If it goes above 350, again, you may look to sell the stock because its usual range is between 200 and 350. Something that again uses the same statistical concepts. So again, if you have an example of say two stocks in power sector and you want to find one with less fluctuations, okay? Fluctuation is variation, right? And basically, because you are comparing two different stocks, what you can use is coefficient of variation. So when do we use coefficient of variation? Suppose you are looking at two stocks, one whose price is 1000 and one whose price is 100. Then in this kind of range, there is significant difference in the values. This is where coefficient of variation is very useful because you are looking at a percentage and not at a fixed value. What I mean is that suppose a stock is having a variation between 750 and 1250, then the standard deviation variance will be in hundreds. Compared to a stock which has variation between 20 and 40, standard variation will be very low. But if you see the coefficient of variation, it is a percentage and it may show that the lower value stock is fluctuating more than the higher value stock. So when you have two data sets which differ significantly in values, coefficient of variation is in percentage unit and it is good for comparison.
now coming to population versus sample variance standard deviation whatever you want to calculate we have seen this kind of slide in the past sample is a statistic population is a parameter sample is trying to reflect into a population parameter right mean we have already seen so variance capital s square is variance s itself is standard deviation the annotation for population variance is sigma square but it is a lower case sigma remember upper case sigma is for summation what is the formula sigma square or variance is given by summation of xi is a single data point and mu is the population mean so xi minus mu the square upon n similar formula for the sample standard deviation and variance variance is given by summation of each value minus mean the whole square upon n minus 1 remember the only difference between two formulas is n and n minus 1 how this is done it's a very complicated process so we will not go into the detail but remember that most of the calculations in advanced statistics for sample has n minus 1 population is n so to conclude, we have seen the complete concepts of measures of location, measures of dispersion, and we have seen variance and standard deviation. In the next part of this video, we will do some actual calculations of variance and standard deviation, and that will give you an idea of how these values are calculated. Thank you.